Hey everyone! Um, I just want to do a video about um, my fellow artists and um, all the cool stuff that I have from them. So, first of all, um, most of these artists um, I've met at Mayday Underground, which is a really awesome indie craft show in Rochester, New York. Dare. So, it's local to me at least um and it's all independent artists um small businesses so that's awesome um so may day is twice a year once in the spring and once in the fall um another awesome show um is jack of all trades in buffalo new york um at least one of the artists that i'm going to talk about today is in buffalo so so that's another really awesome show um their show is usually in August. So those are two really awesome indie craft shows that I do. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, the jewelry that I have. So everything that I have here um, is mine. And I've got it either buying it or trading it with the artist. So my first one is my spoon necklace from Sunshine Silverware. So Aaron takes silverware <laughs> and turns them into jewelry and she makes all sorts of cool things but um what she started off with with was the spoon pendants so i have one of those that's one of my favorite pieces um one of the other things that erin makes or she was making i don't think she makes these anymore um but she was making these really cool button rings for a while so people always compliment me on this and wonder where i got it so but she took she posted the tutorial a while back on her Facebook page on how to make them. So they're not that hard to make, but when I got this one, I just figured I'm like, yeah, it's just easier to buy one from my friend. <laughs> so it's just um jewelry wire and some buttons. So that's a really cool way of repurposing. Um next I got this this another actually all of these are my favorite necklaces. So this is from an uh an artist her business name is called lunacy beading unfortunately i can't remember the artist's name herself right now but this is made out of old watch pieces and she used metal clay and put these old watch pieces in and they're really awesome and you can see the garnet stones um because i guess so she she explained to me it's something about um, they use gemstones in, in the old watches because they don't wear out the pieces, like when the hammers are hitting them all the time, don't wear out as fast as metal, I think is what she said. But that is really awesome. So this is, this is my steampunk necklace. So it's really awesome. Um, next is a necklace I have from Jessica of Pocoon Raccoon. This is a little bat necklace. So she hand makes these little animals. So I've watched her. She carves them in wax first and then has them cast into metal. So this one was actually a custom one um, for my husband because usually her bats like this are on, like she has a little branch that they're on. But my husband asked if he could get one that was just hanging by itself so that's just I'm amazed by her craftsmanship so that's awesome um my next necklaces are by the naughty owl um k-n-o-t-t-y naughty sometimes I'll say it and people think I'm saying the naughty owl I'm like no it's not naughty it's naughty so these are wood and they just, they look like little banners, little bunting. So they're, they just feel festive and happy to me. And so these are, I keep saying this for all the necklaces, but <laughs> these are a few of my favorite necklaces. Like I have too many favorites now, so it's, it's kind of hard to decide what to wear every day. So this was the first one that I got. Um, I think I actually traded her a sweater owl for it. <laughs> So that's one really cool thing in the craft show community is um, 
if you like something that someone has and then they like something that you make, a lot of times um, you can trade. So this is my newest necklace and I've been wearing it every day since May Day. Um, it's from Tesson Tesson Home, I think is uh, her business name. And the woman's name is escaping me right now because I met so many new people um, over May Day weekend. So, But she makes these out of um, pallet wood. It's recycled pallet wood. And I kind of wish that I'd gotten a piece. So a lot of, some of the pieces that she have, have the nails still embedded in the wood, which looks really cool and reinforces the fact that it's recycled. But the color on this one kind of called to me. If you guys have kind of noticed, I have a, <laughs> I have a thing going on with, with turquoise and teal. They're kind of my colors that I wear all the time. <laughs> um, so I think that's it for the jewelry. Oh, well, you can consider this jewelry. She makes jewelry. <laughs> so this is a keychain. It's actually my husband's keychain um, by Circuit Breaker Labs. So Amanda takes old circuit boards and recycles them and makes them into jewelry. And they just look really cool and like they're just really fun and geeky and it's just really awesome and her workmanship is really cool and it's just it's so cool to see like all the detail in there so that's all I have for jewelry um, uh, the next person that I'm gonna talk about is Haina from on hand lotions um, these are my favorite things I have from her um, these are aromatherapy rollers and this was a set I got from her, I think it was back in November. I meant to get new ones because this one's running out. So we have Good Morning and Night Night. So Good Morning has, I think it's grapefruit and um, orange in there, which smells lovely. So I use this one as just everyday perfume, which is really cool. Um, so, and then the Night Night one has lavender and chamomile and I think there might be a little bit of vanilla in there so I got stuff on it that's why it's discolored there so I use this at night and it's just it smells lovely and it's just really relaxing and then this one's supposed to be energizing which I think it probably is but I just like the way it smells so that's those uh this next artist um this is the one that's, that's from buffalo um this, these are from Esther of Lumpy Buttons, is her business name, which is really cute. So she makes lots of, like, cute, adorable little felt things. So this is a little mousy that I have from her. Um, and then I have these pins, which they're a little worn because they've, they've been on my purse, so they used to look a lot better. But this is, this is awesome. She does a lot of geeky stuff. So that's my Star Trek badge. I have a Dalek badge, but I don't know where it is right now. So I was, when I was collecting stuff, I didn't know where my Dalek badge went from Doctor Who. So there's that, and then she gave me a little, little mousy. Actually, I think she said it was a rat um, pin. So, so that is lumpy buttons. So, and next I have, woo, I have stuff from Gina. Um, her business name is Moya Lazy Factory. Um, this one is really cute. Um, it's a pin, so he's seen better days because he's been on my purse. But this one, um, Gina actually gave to me when she saw me. We were at a show together, and it was the year that I sprained my ankle really badly. And so she was so sweet. She just came up and gave this to me. I didn't, like, buy it from her. She just gave it to me as, like, a get well soon gift. So I thought that was really sweet of her. Um, and I think this one was a gift, too. Um, she had forgotten her square reader um, at a show. We were at a show together. And she'd forgotten her credit card square reader. And I always have an extra. So I let her borrow it for the day. And so she gave me this, this little fish pig as a thank you. Um, and then I have a little bunny. So she makes lots of little bunnies. All her stuff is just adorably tiny. 
It's either adorably tiny or absolutely gigantic. So she has a giant bunny that she has at her shows. So I kind of picked on her. I'm like, you just can't go in the middle, can you? They're either itty bitty or gigantic. So, and then this one's even itty bittier. Her stuff's just so cute. So that's Moya Lazy Factory. So, and I have this guy, little guy is from uh, Sweet Whimsy Designs, uh, Leandra makes these. So there's a little minion. He's really cute. She makes um, peg dolls. Oh, 2013. Wow. That was a while ago. So she makes lots of cool peg doll things and really nice, simple toys, but she paints them very intricately. Like this is, this is basic compared to some things that I've seen her make. She makes some really awesome things. Um, and these guys are from Wonderful Whitlin. This guy's one of my favorites. Um, this is a spike troll. And he just like whittles them from wood and then draws on a little face with Sharpie. Um, I don't know if this guy's doing shows anymore. Um, we were at the Rochester Brainery, Brainery Bazaar together, I think is where I got this. And then I got this one as well. Um, it's a, it's an old wooden spool and he like whittled a heart on it, which I just thought was really cool. Cause I have a thing for wooden thread spools. I don't know why. So those are really cute. Um, what do I got next? Oh, um, this is a mug from cat clay. It says caffeinate. <laughs> is Godalic as opposed to exterminate it's caffeinate so I bought this as a gift for my husband a few years ago so there's that and I have another mug this mug I've actually never drank out of <laughs> um, I I just like I keep pens in it and stuff um, this is by Potter and Woodsmith um, so I met them at a May Day show. And I just, I like the sentiment, just go make stuff. <laughs> so there's blue on the inside. So that's just really fun. It's a nice reminder. I keep this in my craft room and put stuff in it. So next thing, I've got this little monster guy. Um, it's an ornament. This is by Erin Makes Stuff is her business name. And her name is Erin. Um, again, I met her at May Day. So this is just a little ornament guy. I keep him hanging around in my craft room. Oh, and I have another thing I didn't, I didn't put in my pile, but I'm looking at it right now. I'm like, oh yeah. So she also, my other favorite thing from Erin is these, like, can they're supposed to be can cozies like you know soda can cozies um but i use mine on a mason jar so and he just he makes me smile he makes me happy because we both have a thing for monsters and and i don't knit some people see my monsters my sweater monsters and be like oh did you knit these i'm like no i'm not that talented i just cut up other previous knitting but erin actually knits these and she has a a sign on her booth that says, no, we're not socks and we never were because I think that a lot of people assume that she's just using old socks, but no, she knits these herself. I love the little teeth. And it, these guys are fun because you can, you can mess with their lips just to kind of amuse yourself. And you can make him happy or you can make him sad. <laughs> Those are the weird things that I do to amuse myself. <laughs> So there's that. Um, uh, next is from Hoop Dreams Art, um, Erica. So, and I love this. I really do. And she gave this to me. So I had, I had seen, she had made, she had one that was similar that she had on her Instagram. Um, like back before, I think I'd met her in person. 
And I commented on it because I was going through some, some hard times with, um, I have endometriosis, which basically means I've got like pain in my like lady parts area, like in my, my uterus or whatever. Um, so anyway, I was frustrated just about how my body was. And this is actually part of a Bible verse. I can't remember the reference, but just the, the reminder, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Like God made me. And just when you think of the human body, it's just, it's fascinating that it all even works. So like, even when it isn't working right, it's still amazing that like, I'm able to do whatever, you know? So I had commented on her, on her Instagram post and said, oh, I really like that. Have you sold it yet? Like, I might want to buy it from you. She's like, oh, I already sold it, but I'll make another, I can make another one for you and I'll, I'll get it to you at, at May Day. Cause she knew like we both did May Day Underground. So at one point, you know, at May Day, I think this was like last spring. So her daughter like comes up to me cause she was running her booth. So she sent her daughter over and she's like, here, my mom wanted you to have this. And like, didn't, didn't want me to pay for it or anything. So I thought that was just, that was really sweet of her to just give it to me. So of course I insisted that her little girl take a nubbin as, as a trade, but I just thought that was really sweet of her. So I really love this. Um, so next I have some hoop art from, uh, Freckles and Frizz is her business name. Uh, Tiffany, it's just a sewing machine, which is really cool. I'm stitching on that. So that's just something really pretty that I have in my living room hanging up. Although it's not there right now because I took it down, but <laughs> so that's just really pretty. And I like, I just like the vintage yet modern feel of, of embroidery hoop art. So that's really fun. Um, next I have, I have a bunch of stuff. Um, from Peaches Products, from Casey. Um, Casey and I have known each other a long time now, like, since kind of like the beginning of each of our, our craft, craft show journeys. Um, Casey is one of the ladies that came up with, that runs, um, sorry, words. One of the ladies that came up with, that, that runs, um, May Day Underground. So it was, uh, Casey from Peaches Products, Amanda from Circuit Breaker Labs are the ones who came up with it and who started the whole show. So, so Casey, she does felted stuff. I don't have any of her needle felted stuff. Um, I, I just have her, her sewn plushies. So this is a fox. And I think I actually, I traded her a fox nubbin for it. We traded foxes. So there's that. So I think all of these were trades. So then here's a, an octopus. So he's fun. And I love how she uses the batiks. They're just really pretty. I like batik fabric, but I don't, I don't work well with cotton. Like, I don't know why. It's just, I like stretchy fabrics. So I use mostly fleece and sweaters, but she does a really awesome job with cottons. So there's that. And then this is an owl. So Casey loves owls. She liked owls before they were cool. And like, she actually knows, she knows all about owls. Like she's researched them and she volunteers at, um, at like owl things, birds of prey things. I think, um, Braddock Bay Raptor research is one of the things. Um, so anyway, this is one of the first things I ever got from Casey. So and he's just cute. Um, and then I have a little Viking, which might have been the, uh, one of the few things I've actually bought from her rather than a trade. So he's just fun. He's got stars on his back. So I like him. Uh, next is Jack Bear Stamps. That's actually my stamp box. He didn't make that. Um, so John... So John did this custom for me, like he, t he took a picture, he, um, 
took a picture of one of my sweater monsters and made me a custom stamp out of it, which I thought was really cool. So I've used him a lot, so he's got a lot of um, ink on him. I have a whole bunch of other stamps <laughs> from John. So I've got three different sizes of my my nubbin logo. So I got the big one, I have a medium one, and I have an itty bitty tiny one. So, and then my Cure Arts, um, the words of the logo, I've got two sizes of that. So I've got this size, and then I've got tiny size. Um, let me grab, I thought I had paper ready. <laughs> So let me just show you how those look when they're when they're actually stamped. So I like rubber stamps. My mom was really into rubber stamps when I was a kid. Oh, I didn't ink it well enough, but well, that's what the stamp looks like. If I'd inked it better, um, it would have turned out <laughs> better. So, let me get one of these. There we go. Look at that. Ta -da! So I use my Jack Bear stamps all the time. <laughs> so I use these in particular to um, stamp my my bags that I use at shows. Um, and these ones, I don't use the tiny ones as much anymore because I used to use them um, to make my price tags, to kind of put my logo on my price tags before I, oh, he's got a little flaw there, so he's He's got a little gap in the front of his tooth. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh yeah. So I used to hand stamp all of my, my craft paper tags because I was really stuck. I'm, I still am. I was really stuck on having craft paper for my tags just because I like the look and it kind of fits the sort of nostalgic feel that I have going on with the sweater monsters. Like they're modern, but they're nostalgic because they kind of make you think like, you know, sock monkeys. Like I say all the time, they're the mutant cousins of sock monkeys. <laughs> so let's see if I can ink this guy a little better this time. I was being too gentle with it before. Do do do. So yeah, um, I was, I was stamping my tags with craft paper and then my husband found me some printable craft paper tags. So I stopped stamping them, but I still have my stamps for when I need them. So, and then I've got this greetings from Rochester postcard, um, so John made a gigantic stamp, like this was the size of the stamp. Um, and he had it as a, like a do it yourself, like make and take type of deal. At one of the Mayday Undergrounds, like a few years back, it was a while ago. Um, so I actually made this with his ginormous stamp. Greetings from Rochester, even though I technically don't live in Rochester, but I used to live in Rochester and I'm in Rochester enough. Um, I actually live an hour outside of Rochester. 
out in the country. But I kind of still consider Rochester like sort of home-ish. <laughs> My parents live out there. So I think that might be everything. Um, oh, I forgot one. So this, I bought, I actually bought this last weekend, um, from my friend Denise of making the nest of it is her business name. So it's a bookmark. So, and I, I bought it as a gift for my grandma. I don't know why, like my grandma's probably not going to watch this before her birthday. So <laughs> I don't really have to be secret about it, but my grandma really likes birds and she likes to read. So it's going to, she's going to be 92. So I thought she'd enjoy that. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything. And oh, I was going to show you. So Mayday Underground always has, um, these swag bags is what they call them. So the artists contribute like you know, small items like stickers or pins or just little magnets or whatever. Um, so the very, very first Mayday Underground, I think Casey made these bags <laughs> and she hand stamped them and she designed the logo. Um, and I got one of them because <laughs> that the very first Mayday Underground which actually was on May 1st, and that's where the name came from. So it was on May Day, and they, it was in, like, the basement of a warehouse. Um, so that's... Underground kind of had a double meaning. They were literally underground, and then the whole concept of, like, indie underground type of thing. Um, so that's where the name May Day Underground came from. But it's really funny. Uh, those of us that do the show all the time just call it May Day, even though... It's not always on May Day. It's actually usually a few days before. Um, but yeah, this is from that very first show. Um, it is the only May Day that I haven't been a part of, um, except for some of the mini May Days, uh, the holiday mini May Days. I usually I haven't done because I've got too much going on at that point in the year. <laughs> but so yeah, I still have my my swag bag. Mayday Underground, very first year in 2010, I think it was. So they've been doing this for seven years and it's going strong. And they have quite the following in Rochester. And when the show open, it opens up, like there's people lined up to get the swag bags because I think it's the first 50 shoppers get swag bags. Um, they don't look like this anymore. They look more like the first thing I showed you. So they're they're like a larger reusable shopping bag type of deal. And the design changes each year. This is, this is the one I have in the house right now. I have other ones um, that I keep in the car for my reusable bag. So this was a few years ago. She had like a sugar skull type of deal going on. This year was really cute. She designed a Bob Ross owl. So it's a little owl with an afro painting. And it's, it was really super cute. So yeah, there's my little, my plug for Mayday Underground and my plug for all of my friends who make awesome stuff. So yeah, um, shop handmade, shop small. Um, and I realize not, not everyone can afford to buy handmade stuff all the time because handmade stuff can be expensive. And so you really have to pick and choose. So one thing that I'm really specific about with buying handmade is I'm very specific about my jewelry. So that's the one thing that I've kind of decided, like, that I'm going to either make it myself or buy it from my friends. Um, I don't wear a lot of jewelry. I, I wear a lot of necklaces. But, um, yeah... And I'm very specific about what jewelry I like. I like things that are different, that, like, you don't usually find everywhere. I like recycled stuff. That's why, like, these these three in particular um, are really cool because they are made from recycled materials. So you got recycled spoon, recycled pen, or recycled pendant, 
recycled palette and um, recycled watch parts. So there's, it's just, oh, and recycled button. There's that as well. And recycled circuit boards. <laughs> so I have a thing for recycled stuff. It's just, it's really cool. Um, and I like supporting my friends. I have so many friends that do cool stuff. Um, and I feel like it's worth it to support them. So jewelry is one thing I'm a real stickler on as far as trying to buy handmade. Like I don't buy stuff in the stores. Most things in the stores I don't really like anyway. So, um, and actually even my, my wedding ring and my engagement ring, um, were made by a small business owner, like a small jeweler. Um, that was actually friends with my husband. My husband actually designed this ring and his friend made it. Like, I remember seeing the cast out of wax for the wedding band um, to make sure I liked it and everything. And and so, and that is a, a pigeon's blood ruby, which I never wanted a diamond. I always wanted a ruby. So yeah. So yeah, even my wedding ring is is handmade. It was handmade by an artist, so... So yeah, um, and I would say don't feel bad if, if you can't always buy handmade, like I realize like it's expensive because us artists have to pay ourselves for our work. Like we're not little kids, you know, in China. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's my whole thing about all my handmade stuff. And now I'm just arranging things because they're cute. And I'm just, I'm really thankful that I've been able to um, get into this community. Um, I'm in the handmade community now and everybody's really supportive of each other and gives each other ideas and tips and all sorts of things and it's just it's really cool to be a part of it all um so i'm a part of i'm a part of two different groups i'm more active in one than the other um so there's rochester artisans um and then there is um we call it arnest so it's rochester new york etsy street team so that's the one that i'm I'm more active in, so we have like monthly meetings and stuff, so yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed um, this video, and so I will try and make sure that I have um, either their online shops, most of these people are on Etsy, um, so I'll have their Etsy shops um, and or their social media info case you would like to purchase from them. If you like what you saw here, um, you can buy it from them. I mean, not these specifically. These are mine. You can't have these. I mean, I suppose if you really wanted them, I, I might be generous, but... <laughs> and now I'm just rambling, so I'm going to stop now. So, thank you all, and I will see you later. Well, I won't see you. You probably won't see me, but I will talk to you all later. <laughs> Bye.